Alright, hello and welcome to another streaming episode from Team RPG. Going to be continuing on with the Doki Doki Literature Club playthrough that we were up to. So we'll jump straight into it as soon as possible. Just gotta make sure everything's working.
and I've just noticed the mic's been off. Of course it has. That's what happens when you're no good at streaming. Let's see. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which... I'm kinda hungry. These characters always seem to surprise me in this game. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. Eh, maybe. I have my reasons. I wonder what they are. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh, eh? Why that, all of a sudden? No reason, really. I think the main character's a bit smarter than he leads on in this game. I just wanted to look at it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. And of course everyone knows that there's nothing in it. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Aha, aha, aha. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. I should have changed the name of the character to Sherlock Holmes. I think I might do that in the next playthrough if there's more than one reason to do that. So, either you're not hungry and you wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. Wow. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. I have trouble picturing the person who made this game coming up with this dialogue, to be honest. It just seems hard to imagine. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Yeah, go along with that. Ha ha ha. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah, ah. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Bill to let me borrow some money. That's an, uh, 
interesting response to being caught. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. I think Bill here would listen if she asked. Just a guess. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Ooh. Ah ha ha. I really like when you speak your mind, Jury. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. But. Uh, I don't know about that. That's. There's no way you could think that. You were right though. I did something bad and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. Good, I thought for a minute there I was going mad. Oof. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Eh heh heh. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. Oh, crafty one. Very crafty. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. I keep bringing up the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. This is feeling like it's becoming a Sherlock Holmes kind of thing. Criminal Lord Sayori, of course. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Yeah, here, here. Whap. I think that's how you say that. Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? Ah, a cookie? A cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. He, is this a miracle? Cookies raining from the sky. Fair enough. It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ha 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 ha. Best girls here to save the day. I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Ah ha ha ha. Nah, Natsuki. That's so nice of you. Throwing cookies at people's faces. Sure, sure. I'm so happy. 
Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper, takes a big bite. Show good. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Hehehe. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Nehehe. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Om. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Yep, she's definitely the crafty one of this group. Hey, hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Uh, where's Monica, anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She just... she probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular, after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Ah ha ha, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh he he, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Don don don. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. Appropriate reaction. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Mm -hmm. Eh? Monica chose the club over a boyfriend after all. You're so strong willed. I can barely keep up here. B boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? 
Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Uh, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah ha ha. Okay, I don't think I can believe that. That makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! Hooray! That sounds cool. Okay. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case... I won't let you down, Bill. From now on, I'm just going to refer to my character as Sherlock. It just seems so much more appropriate. Monica smiles sweetly. It's the other three just disappeared. Ah! I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah ha ha. Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... not really. Smooth. No one notices, as long as you play it calm. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous ep escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. I don't think that's that amazing, to be honest, unless the cookie was, I don't know, giant sized. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Man. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? Okay, good. I was reading that right. English is starting to fail me. I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in 
on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what the liter what literature is all about. Keep stumbling over my words here. That's not what literature is about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Making a visual novel, that's how you do it. Something that speaks to their creative minds. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. Such negativity, much where. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. I told you, criminal mastermind. You can see it coming from a long, long way away. rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What, what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! Ah, uh, good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Of course they do. Cupcakes it is then. I think everyone would attend this event if there were cupcakes available to be honest. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. I am smiling, so I guess cool. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Wow! Gotta sit up straight and pretend like I was shocked. Wow! I open my eyes to find Sori's face spilling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Not quite, but still. We'll just pretend like I did. <laughs> Sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. 
got a point. This isn't the napping club. I've got to wonder about that. I'm sure somewhere out there, there is a napping club. And I think I would like to put forward my voice as a ambassador for that club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know? Decisions, decisions, decisions. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? No, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. Hi. Knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. There? Sayori glances around at herself. Here was it written all over me? Considering their static pictures, how is it? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah. Uh, I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. Uh, I got a bad feeling about this. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Oh, harsh man, harsh. Hey, you meanie. You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Oh, that's just cruel. Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I don't think she will. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. What the hell is with this guy, actually? I mean, I understand that they're close, but... Common sense, man. Common sense. 
Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> this is kind of a hard angle to get used to. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. There? D don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh... I... I guess... Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? And now he's calling her fat. This is definitely not going to end well. <laughs> it did when I bought it. Sigh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Of course, I'm going to have to say stuff like this in this kind of game, aren't I? Just ignore it straight through. That's the best you can do. D don't say that out loud. Here, here, here. Anyway, you look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Ooh. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So, if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. Fair call. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. I wish there was a sense of perspective so you could see where the other characters of this game were while this is happening. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better of taking care of each other than we are of taking care of ourselves. Which of that? Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. Well, hell, that's fucked. 
go for it, I say. Why not? What has he got to lose? You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was just joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? I wonder if I get to hear the one I wrote this time. Yay! Bill, I can't wait to read yours. Oh, it's going to be bad. Yeah, same. I already forgot I was going to call myself Sherlock. Wow. Okay, starting from now. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Who should I show my poem to first? Well, she wanted to see it first. First she is. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Bill! Don't mind the music either. Eh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. Ugh. You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sorry. You must be seriously overreacting. I don't know what I did different. I should have kept track so I at least knew what I was aiming for. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Okay, so that's what I did. I had no idea what I was doing, and it worked. Because I have no idea what I like either. Ah ha 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 ha. Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem... It's not just a poem. It's a Sherlock poem. Got it right that time. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. Like a true artist, I guess. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. Okay. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. I told you she's a criminal mastermind, this girl. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. 
need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Yeah? Well... I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see... Hmm... I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Okay, bittersweet. I should be writing this down, I can feel like I'm gonna need to know it. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well... I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. Make a nice, happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Sherlock. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Okay, this is gonna be one. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Oops, went too far. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile be between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Oof. That's a... That's a long, 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 long poem. I might just scroll down that more slowly again and have another read of it because that sounds like I'm going to miss something. Okay, I've got no idea what it's trying to imply. I mean... This is not a straightforward thing. This makes me feel like back at high school. Everything about this game, actually. It's like being back at high school. So I guess that's a strength of it. For what it's worth. 
I don't even want to guess. I'm sure we'll be told. So just let's hear their interpretation and move on. All I hear is echo, 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 echo. At least I'm on the right path. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. I don't think he's thinking hard enough about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm going to keep writing until I die. Uh -huh. Don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah is always has a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. Seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Now, who should I show it to next? Let's see. Well, as I did last time, I guess the best way is just work on there. Well, it's not terrible. But it's pretty disappointing after your last one. I've got no idea what these people like anymore. I don't even know what I'm doing, so... Let's just keep going. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. So, Yuri is the best girl, is she? I have to take your word for that. I can see the appeal though, I'll admit that. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. I don't know quite how I got to that though. I, I'm starting to think that the poems mean something, but I've got no idea what. Just hope I'm not digging myself into some kind of grave, to be honest. Eh? You think so? 
Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Okay. Sayori has a type, all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so, uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Fluffy is a descriptive word. You can see that. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Positive reinforcement, right here. Oh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Please don't be a long one. Here. <laughs> Oh, of course, it's a long one. Should have seen that coming. <clears throat> Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favourite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg real bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Oh dear. I think you're definitely right about this character. She is definitely so sundry. There's something... I don't know if this is even Sundari anymore, I mean, starting to get into the ab abusive side of things. If the physical violence starts, then I know we'll cross the line, I'm sure, I'm sure of it. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Well, they all feel like they're getting longer. I think I'll need a drink a bottle of water just to get through all these poems today. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. People who like spiders are creepy. That's what I interpret it as. I doubt I have to explain it. Okay. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. Oh dear. Analogies. That means I got it way wrong. And it helps people realise how stupid they've been. Yep, took it too straightforward. This is embarrassing. Oh. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. I wonder if Natsuki likes spiders. Don't know why that would matter. Do you know people like that? S 
Sundaris. <laughs> of course, it's how about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby, or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you, or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone, and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least, I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. feeling they're trying to teach me something. Moving on, we're up to Yuri. Um, are you still mad at me? I can't even remember why I was mad at her. I can't even remember if I was mad at her. For disrespecting Natsuki yesterday. Oh, that's right. I picked the wrong side in that battle, it turned out, but we'll just pretend like it never happened. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you. You prefer her writing over mine. I don't know how I got to this point. All I can do is keep going. Let's just keep going. That's not really true. Meaning, when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yuri. You might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? Uh, let's see, how far in am I? I've just started the second poem, so... This should be the third day at the club. I'm not sure if that tells you how far in I am. I hope it is. I always let these things happen. So should be actually thinking about it maybe two hours? Not sure how the pace is on this thing though. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. Whenever she th thinks before she speaks. Okay. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So, please don't force yourself to be around me. Ah, 
8 to 12 hours, okay. Well, for a visual novel, I mean, with all the poem writing, I could definitely say it taking a while, depending on how long it is. I can believe it, I'll go with that. Not sure though, like you say, it could end dramatically or it could keep going forever. So please don't force yourself to be around me. That's awfully harsh. I know this is what Monica wants. But it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri, please. It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. Oh, now I'm feeling bad. Oof. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide to that request. So she didn't show me her poem, so I must have really pissed her off. Hi again, Bill. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ha <laughs> ha, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. I like this one. Let's see. Okay. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. So it looks like picking feelings is the hint to get into the, this kind of response. Ah, uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. I 
must be really bad at writing poems if I can give off that sort of vibe by just randomly picking words and jumbling them together. Or really amazing. I think in a better I'll go with really amazing because that's much what I prefer. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. So gentle feelings? I don't think Bottles was that gentle to be honest. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew so that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Okay. Save me. The colours, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... Uh, I can't even read that. Cassophony of meaningless noise. No. Uh, well, what do you do? The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Save me. Load me. Okay. So there's probably a point to that as well. I get the feeling I'm way too literal for things like this, but we'll see how it goes. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? She writes abstract. Okay. Ha ha ha. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Okay, so there was a point to it. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. There's no way for us to represent that though, I don't think. It's almost like magic. I'm not the first person to say that either. The way I wrote the lines, really short, makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, 
Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Ah, oh, probably could have used that in the last stream. Save my game before the choice? Well, whatever. You never know when you might change your mind. Wait, if they're telling me to save the game now, no, reading too much into it, I can feel it, just straightforward. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Oh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Huh. Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is co are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on. Sayori is putting it on all the posters in case everyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Anyone wants to prepare. Yeah. Sayori, who's been colouring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh. Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. 
It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Oof. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ahaha, ha, ha. that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no, no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Ah, uh, of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. 
The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> oh, um, there you go. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. Ahaha, <laughs> thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she works quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ah ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. Hee hee hee. Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. 
Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. This poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Bill liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Eh <laughs> The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay... Now, who's next? Natsuki? Humph. Don't make me go before Bill. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Bill lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. That's a key. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Humph. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, 
and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends... It's just... embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming, though, through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's just about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee hee hee. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Bill. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's been a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's say that one day Yuri asked me asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? 
you're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> okay, now I know this is a choice. Definitely time to save. Oh dear, decisions, decisions, decisions. thinking about this because I got a feeling I have to go with this one simply because of who I'm talking to. I guess that's what I'm going to do. If I'm wrong, well, what's the worst that can happen? Oops, I skipped the line there. Ah, uh, Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? She's so beautiful and smart. She's... No, I don't think you can betray your old friend. It's... It's a tough call. <laughs> well, what do you do? I already see her in the club every day. I feel like you need like a reaction for this, just choose wisely or something. Just a banner, actually. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You are so silly, Bill. You think about me too much sometimes. Fury would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm... The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Okay. So we'll say that again. And unfortunately, this is I think where we've got to call it for the day, for the air for the day for the stream. Hope you've all enjoyed watching. And until next time which should be tomorrow about the same time as this stream started I'm hoping we'll pick it up from then and see if we can't make any progress so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it